Hey guys, good morning and happy Sunday. So it is entryway makeover day. This entryway has always been something that I have actually struggled with because it's adjacent to the living room. So it kind of acts like a complete living room, but at the same time, it feels very separated. It's kind of where all of our stuff that we need to take out of the house, like to storage or to put back in the car. At one point, my desk was in this area. It's gone through a lot of stages and now it's ready to be in its final stage and look like the living room, look like a part of the room, but also have its own kind of moment. So I'm excited to get started. I have been loving this bookcase from CB2 and I've always wanted a bookcase on this one wall in the entryway and it got here a couple of days ago. So we're gonna put that together first. I'm gonna show you guys some things that I picked up for the thrift store and the Rose Bowl flea market and we'll get started. Kinsley, <gasps> give me that. That's not good girl. According to the directions, this should be fairly easy to put together. Uh, just a couple of screws and putting it on the wall. Ah, it's gonna look something like that. It's shorter than I thought it was gonna be. Huh, that's all right. So now we just need to hang it on the wall. Don't fall before I get that. I never use the plastic little screw heads that they send with build your own furniture like this. I always use these drywall and stud anchors because they're made out of metal. They're a lot easier to put into the wall. Okay, I think we got it. It looks really good and it's very sturdy. Before we style the bookcase, I wanna get the rest of the furniture in here um, so that we kinda have a, a vibe going. I got this bench at the St. Vincent de Paul thrift store and I was on a mission to find a bench that I could possibly upcycle, DIY, change, but when I found it, it was brand new and still had all of the tags on it. I was like, wow, I feel really bad <laughs> completely redoing something that already looks pretty great. I think that the only problem with it and the only thing that I don't like about it that this color wood isn't the same wood that's on our new bookshelf. So I'm thinking it's going to be beautiful right underneath the windows because I've always wanted a bench there. So I'm not quite sure what to do. I would rather the woods match but it's a perfectly good bench. Let me know in the comments what you guys would do and if you guys all think that I should change the wood out for like a solid piece of wood and stain it the same color as the bookcase, then I will do that DIY in another video. Cause I also think it would be really cool to add another shelf or another um, piece of wood underneath because there's these this brace here or this support system where I think that there could be another piece of wood and then maybe I could put some, I don't know, cute baskets or something here or in an, a regular entry, maybe it could be used for shoes. I think that could be a really cool bench idea that this bench doesn't now offer me. So let me know in the comments and then I'll do it next time. So I found this cowhide rug at the thrift store, gosh, maybe a couple of months ago and I've been hanging on to it for this space specifically. I got it at Goodwill for $29.99, so it was 30 bucks. It's obviously way too big and way too wide for this entryway space. So my idea is to cut this cowhide rug in half down the middle and then arrange them side by side to create kind of more like a run or a long piece of rug. Okay, what do you guys think? Or we could do them opposite. So put the larger section on each side and taper in smaller. Since they have such a big overlap in the middle, it may make it look more of the same size. I'm gonna try it out and see. I think I actually like them better this way. I think it looks more of the same width. So let's see what it looks like with the bench on it. So 
So now the big question is, is the copper piping pieces, copper piping pieces that I have going to look good in this space? Is it going to add a much needed kind of diversity of color or is it just gonna look really out of place? So let's see. So here is our copper ladder, which I can put like some really pretty blankets on that kind of ties in all of our color palettes. Here is our copper planner that we made in part one of this series. Okay. And this chair you might recognize from a thrift store flip, which actually looks really good with the copper. So I'm hoping that it ties in the copper a little more. I don't think I'm feeling this blanket here. Tip number one, don't pull on your blanket ladder. So we're just gonna try out a good old handy neutral colored one. I feel like it's too crowded. It's not like we need extra seating with this whole big bench here, but I'm thinking a basket here and then maybe like some blankets or extra pillows or something in there. Or you can just put your shoes in the basket, Romeo. So I have been collecting all of these great things to actually go on this bookcase. I got all of these gr great vases at the Rose Bowl flea market, some things from Goodwill and other thrift stores. This really pretty basket that I picked up from Goodwill recently, actually. Um, I was thinking I could take off the handle because obviously it won't fit. Um, this one I got for $5.99. Little terracotta vases that we brought back from Texas when we went thrift shopping. All of the candles and the candle wraps that I made in part one of this series. This actually got in the Philippines when we went the first time a few years ago um, and I got it on the island of Boracay. These bookends that I got from Texas on our thrift store trip. These I got at the Rose Bowl this past weekend. I got this little like, kind of like dusty coppery dish. I've been collecting really beautiful books that I found at the thrift stores. When you take off the plastic covers, it reveals a really beautiful book cover. And that's the perfect color that we're using right now. Oh, Kinsley, are you gonna go on the bookcase? So I like to start with books when I'm doing a bookcase because I like them pretty much on every shelf. They're great to use them as like lifts to make things taller or just as books between bookends. So I've got all of these great books. And you know, I used to be kind of not particular about what book it is as long as it was a pretty color and it was a hardback. Now I'm a little more particular. So now what I look for are not only pretty colored books, but also books that are like in art and architecture, beauty and fashion and poetry. And with bookcases, you guys are just gonna try everything. You gotta move stuff around, style it together. I really want a kind of a weird plant to go up here. And I've been on a mission. I looked at the Rose Bowl, I've looked at other places. I need our larger vase to be on top for that to happen. Maybe this is just a lighter color. I got this at Goodwill for like $3.99. And it was a pretty kind of like cream off-white colored crackle. I really like this vase that I got at the Rose Bowl for like three bucks because it doesn't actually look like a vase. It kind of looks like a, a sculptural kind of statue thing. So maybe this guy up here too. And I kind of like to work in threes. I think that's kind of a rule of thumb when doing a bookcase. Okay, so we've got like one, two, so we need what something here. This little marble, what is this? What are you? This is a great height for a candle. So definitely a candle here. And then maybe we'll stand some of the books up. And I want it tearing down outwards. So it's building up to the center of the bookcase. So this is the one we did in the part one of this series. Okay, a candle, now what? I think this will add some good height behind here maybe. Although that's kind of like our third piece. I'm about to go against my rule here. I think we need more. Should we do this face? And it has like a mustardy color and like a beigey color. Ooh, I kind of like that. So sometimes the rule of three doesn't always work out. You just go with what you think looks really good. I think this book should lay down because it's only one. I plan on taking this part off so that it was just really clean and short because I didn't think it would fit. But let's see how tall she is. Maybe we'll decide. Oh, oh, she fits. <laughs> how should I leave it? I think I'm gonna leave it for now and live with it for a little bit and see if it just bothers me that that's on there. It actually adds some height, which I like. Something to go on the book. I like that the color is the same and it kind of does this effect. Ooh, something darker? 
I got this in Texas too. And I think it's a little thing to hold like maybe little sugar packets. We don't use that. So I think it's just decorative. Okay, well now we got one more shelf to go. And I always get in this bind where I started at the top with the best stuff and where you work your way down to the bottom and then you get to the bottom shelf and all of your good stuff's gone and you have the leftovers that you're trying to like piece together. Okay, so these are the, this is the garland, the wooden garland that I actually made for our Christmas tree this year. But I felt like it was kind of a year round thing that I could have it out. And this guy, I got at Goodwill in Texas for $1.99. Okay, maybe down here. My initial plan was to kind of make like a necklace for a vase. And so it was kind of gonna be like a this situation that I was gonna tie, it, tie on it. It could also come out of a vase like that, or maybe down here. Maybe it needs something down here. Or maybe I should find some pretty things to put in there. And I definitely need books on this bottom shelf. I also have this little guy left over from Christmas because I got him at the Rose Bowl last month and he's so cute and I couldn't bear to pack him away in all of our Christmas stuff. So I was hoping he would kind of be cute styled here somewhere. Is it maybe too tall? I don't know, he's pretty cute. Okay, so I think for now, the bookcase is styled well enough so that we can go find a really pretty plant to go up here. And we need to stop by Joann's to pick up some pillow inserts for our grain bags that we're gonna be making into pillows, like lumbar pillows for our bench. Um, so let's go shopping. This store is always so beautiful. Holy cow, that's a huge snake plant exactly like these olive trees, like this branch, but tiny, it's too big, they're trees. So they have this option, with, which is kind of higher end, I guess, Royal Silk Luxury Down Alternative. It is $10.99. I'm gonna go with this option that's $5.99 and it's on sale. Finding a plant that looks like a miniature olive plant at Rolling Greens Nursery was a fail. Just went out to our backyard and basically stole some olive branches, hoping that they will dry out really pretty and then they'll look just as great in this pot that we're gonna put them in. So I picked up this block of foam, floral foam, from the dollar spot at Target, like during Christmas time, I think. And I'm gonna shave it down, stick it in the bottom. You can also hot glue it down into the bottom to keep it stuck in there really well. Oh, it's just like styrofoam. That's fine. Also put some moss in the bottom to hide this floral foam. I'm gonna go back and do that later, but since mine is up really high, you won't even really see it. Okay, so for the lumbar pillow that's gonna go on the back of the bench, we're gonna be making it out of this linen grain sack that I got at the flea market. And this is gonna be pretty easy because it's already basically a tube for a pillow. So we're gonna stuff it and stitch it up. It takes a while to get all of the stuffing massaged into the pillow. You just kind of kind of keep working at it until it's not lumpy anymore. And then when you get all the way to the end, we're gonna sew it up. Some of you guys have asked me before about like, oh, well, how do you wash your pillows, your throw pillows? I don't wash my throw pillows. They're just throw pillows, so they're just like decorative. So this one's not gonna be used a lot. So if I ever do, if ever, anything ever happens to it and I wanna wash it, I guess I'm just gonna have to take the stuffing out and restuff it. And I'm just gonna turn it into itself so that you don't see that seam that was already there from the bag and stitch it closed all the way down. Okay, just give it another little massage. Or like a beating. <laughs> and then I had enough material to make one more of these rectangle pillows that I made for our living room when I did the living room makeover to go on this side to tie it all in. Okay, I think that that's all the pieces to make over this entryway.
might ask me about why I didn't put curtains in the space and that is because we have lots of windows in this room in the living room and I just feel like if I do it to one space I have to do it to all of them and I'm actually not a big fan of curtains. Our blinds block out a lot of sunlight and have plenty of privacy um, so I'm opting not to do curtains because I don't want to put them in the whole room. You absolutely could put curtains in your entryway if you want to. So I hope you guys enjoyed this makeover series, three-part makeover series. And if you haven't checked out part one and two, I'll leave them linked below so that you guys can. I made some simple DIYs for this space as well as found some great items from the Rose Bowl flea market. So go check those out, I'll link them below. And if you did like this video, definitely hit the like button below. And if you're not already part of our growing DIY family, definitely hit that subscribe button below. And I will see you guys next Sunday. Bye guys. <laughs> Oh, baby, this is a spider. Oh my god. These are not for babies. No, this is for bookcase. You could just put your shoes in the basket so they're not all over the floor when you come in the house. Oh my god, I'm out of breath. <laughs>